Today we're going to take a look at this malfunctioning Sears dishwasher. It goes through most of the wash cycle, but never quite completes it. Shuts off, blinks the green clean light, and leaves the dishes not so clean. In this model, the blinking clean light indicates that the water is not getting hot enough. We ran this unit through a built-in diagnostic routine, but that did not give us any additional information. However, we know that if the water is hot enough going into the dishwasher, the only two things that can cause this type of a problem are one, a failed controller board, or two, a burnt out heating element, with the heating element being the more likely of the two culprits. To investigate further, we have to unplug the dishwasher from the power supply and shut off the water. In order to be able to physically get to the heating element, we're going to have to pull the dishwasher out from under the counter. Before we start moving things around, let's put a soft mat in front of our dishwasher. We want to protect it and the floor from the damage. Dishwashers are commonly secured to the counter using two screws and we need to remove them and the kick plate on the bottom of the dishwasher before we'll be able to move it. Most likely, you'll also not be able to get to the heating element unless you first disconnect the water, power and sewer. The space is usually very tight, so in order to disconnect the water supply line, you'll probably have to use something like the basin wrench. Use a pair of pliers, tongue and groove or slip joint type will work well, to squeeze and move out of the way the clip that secures your dishwasher's connection to the sewer line. Leave the clip on for later reattachment. To prevent damage to your floors, as you disconnect the water and sewer connections, keep handy an absorbent rag and a shallow dish to catch that extra water left in the lines. Now that we have disconnected all the wires and hoses, and with the dishwasher sitting on its front door, we can easily pull the wires from the heating element. Let's make sure that it really is bad by checking continuity with a digital multimeter set on the ohms scale. We first make sure that the meter itself is working by shorting the leads and reading a zero on the display. Now we put the leads across the disconnected heating element and verify that it is indeed burnt out. Here the display is indicative of an open circuit. Let's undo the plastic hex nuts which secure the heating element in its place. With dishwasher back on its feet, we gently pop the heating element out and pull it out the rest of the way. Since we knew with rather high probability that the old heating element was bad, we had pre-ordered a compatible replacement one online in advance. It's a good thing we did. Our local hardware store does not carry it and we did not have to go hunting it down all over town at specialized appliance repair shops. If we were lucky enough to find this heating element stocked locally, it would have cost us double what we paid online. Worse yet, if we could not find the heating element in town, we would have had to put the dishwasher back together again and start all over once we had the new part in our hands. We must make sure that the new element has rubber washers already installed around the connectors. They should have been at least provided. It is not the best idea to reuse the old ones. They may leak. Check the replacement heating element's continuity using the same digital multimeter. Let's gently work the heating element into place, making sure that we do not bend the clips which will hold it there. Now again place the dishwasher on its door and secure the element in place by hand tightening the new plastic hex nuts. They too should have been supplied with your new element. Tighten another half a turn or so with an adjustable wrench. Don't overdo it. Connect power supply wires back to the new heating element. The power cord is connected back up to the metal box that encloses the electrical connections. If the original wire nuts are still in good shape, you can reuse them to make the hot black wire and common white wire connections. If the old wire nuts look burnt or brittle, make sure to get properly sized new ones. Same goes for your power cord. Do not forget to also reconnect the green ground wire to the chassis with its attached screw before closing up that box and securing it with its own screw. Next, reconnect to the sewer line once again using a pair of appropriate pliers to get the clip back in place. Use a basin wrench, now flipped in the opposite direction, to reconnect the water supply hose. Slide the dishwasher back in place, plug it back in, and turn the water back on. Before we finish reinstalling the dishwasher completely, let's check to make sure that it works as it should. The dishwashing cycle completed with a steady green light and when we open the dishwasher door we see steam coming out. All good signs and the dishes are finally coming out clean again. The ultimate sign of success. We can now reattach our dishwasher to the counter with the two screws. 
put the noise insulating gasket back in the kick plate cover and secure it to the dishwasher with the two screws using a socket wrench. And we're done.